Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Janvi Manhas from Department of Biochemistry, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. Today I am going to talk about module stress fibers and cell motility, which is module number 15. Eukaryotic cell generates an internal force against the surrounding microenvironment, which is the extracellular matrix. This allows the cell to adhere, migrate and maintain its structural integrity. The cytoskeleton through specialized bundles of ecto ectomyosin called stress fibers senses, generates and regulates cellular contractility and microenvironment reorganization. This maintains structural homeostasis and controls the cell and tissue function. The various objectives of this module are to study and understand the following. The first objective is to study the stress fiber structure. After understanding the stress fiber structure, we will understand the different subtypes and the assembly of stress fibers. After that, we will study the molecular signaling in stress fibers followed by the role of stress fibers in cell migration. Finally, we will study the functional significance of stress fibers. Stress fibers were first discovered in the 1920s by light microscopy and it was seen as cytoplasmic dark fibrils or fibers, especially in non-muscle cells which were cultured on glass slides. Now, with the advent of immunofluorescence microscopy, stress fibers were seen as photogenic arrays of long, straight bundles of microfilaments that cross the cell body in cultured cells. The term stress fiber was initially coined to suggest that these structures appeared due to the effects of tension on cytoplasm. Shown here is a mouse embryonic fibroblast which is labelled with F-actin. The cell is imaged using confocal microscopy at 60x magnification and the false colour cyan is used for the ease of interpretation. You can appreciate microfilaments crossing the body of the cells and are also present at the peripheral protrusions. These microfilaments are called stress fibres. So stress fibres are basically tension generating, load bearing and mechanosensitive structures. Let's discuss the stress fiber structure now. These stress fibers are contractile actomyosin bundles which are observed in non-muscle cells. They are composed of up to 30 actin filaments which are held together with proteins such as alpha actinin, fascin and filamentin and these filaments are cross-linked by non-muscle myosin. In this image, you can see A, that is a fibroma cell stained with myosin light chain as red and alpha actinin as green. This figure shows periodic localization of proteins along the stress fibers, that is, the red is interspersed with the green. Panel B shows osteosarcoma cells expressing alpha actinin as red and myosin as green. By illumination microscopy, it can be seen that the nanoscale organization of myosin 2A microfilaments and actin fibers forms stress fibers. You can also appreciate C, which is a schematic diagram showing the interaction of myosin 2A minifilaments with actin fibrils leading to contraction of stress fibers. The three key components of stress fibers are actin filaments, myosin protein as well as actin binding proteins such as alpha actinin. Let us study the structure of stress fibers in detail. The actin filaments have an inherent polarity with the plus or the barbed end and a minus or a pointed end. There are two forms of actin that is the monomeric or globular G actin and the polymeric filaments known as F actin or filamentous actin. The G actin 
has an ATP binding cleft and it is polymerized to double helical F-actin by the hydrolysis of ATP. In stress fibers of non-muscle cells, the actin filaments may show uniform, alternating or random polarity. In motile cells, the stress fibers may show graded polarity with uniform polarity at the ends and mixed polarity at the center of the fiber. Here you can see double helical filamentous F-actin formed by polymerization of monomeric G-actin. Actin filament can polymerize at both ends but at different rates. As a result, they acquire intrinsic polarity. The fast polymerizing end is the barbed or the plus end and the slow growing end is the minus or the pointed end. Myosin motors move towards the barbed ends of the actin filaments to cause contraction. The next important element of stress fibers is the non-muscle myosin 2 also known as NMM2. It is a hexamer with two essential light chains, two heavy chains and two regulatory light chains also known as RLC. The heavy chain engages with the F-actin through its globular head domain and hydrolyzes ATP to effect contraction and tension generation within the stress fiber. There are three isoforms of non-muscle myosin 2 in mammals, 2A, 2B and 2C. The 2A isoform is found in the front of a migrating cell that has high rate of ATP hydrolysis and can slide actin filaments more rapidly contributing to addition formation. The 2B isoform is useful for sustained contraction at the rear of the migrating cell and promotes directional migration of the cell. Actin filaments undergo constant cycles of actin polymerization and depolymerization. After depolymerization, monomeric actin is recycled and delivered to sites of new actin filament formation. This is known as actin treadmilling. To regulate treadmilling, filaments can be branched, capped, elongated or cross-linked using different actin binding molecules. Actin cytoskeletal is a complex yet dynamic network that needs to be remodeled quickly in response to extracellular signal. The rapid turnover of actin cytoskeletal is tightly regulated by a plethora of actin binding molecules which are further controlled by various signaling pathways. For example, the actin nucleators like ARP 2 by 3 complex, ARP stands for actin related proteins, are required to assemble actin filaments de novo or to produce branches existing filaments. The inactive ARP23 complex binds to N-WASP to nucleate a new branch. N-WASP stands for neural Viscott Aldrich syndrome protein. This is a nucleation promoting factor. There are other proteins known as formins which control nucleation and polymerization of new actin filaments or elongation of existing filaments. But they are not involved in actin branching. Formins are involved in phyllopodia and lamellipodia formation, assembly of stress fibers and actin networks for vesicular transport, cell adhesion and endothelial junction stabilization. You can also see a blue Coughlin protein. This protein binds to and removes G-actin monomers and serves as actin depolymerization factor. Actin monomers are recycled after depolymerization of filaments to be reused for filament reformation. Another protein, profilin, is responsible for delivery of actin monomers. You can also appreciate CP or the capping protein in this picture. To prevent constant growth of actin filaments, barbed ends 
can be blocked by these capping proteins. Capping can be prevented by other actin binding molecules such as WASP, ENA. These promote filament elongation. WASP stands for vasodilator stimulated phosphoprotein and ENA is another actin regulatory protein. Besides actin branching, formation of 3D actin networks is achieved by cross-linking actin filaments into parallel bundles or meshwork. You can appreciate the yellow-colored cross-links of alpha-actinin and green-colored stabilization factor proteins such as cortactin in this picture. The important actin cross-linkers are alpha-actinin, facin, filaments and spectrin. Cortactin which is seen as a green-colored stabilization factor in between the branches of actin filaments binds to F-actin and ARP23 complex and stabilizes the actin branches. Now coming to the B part of this picture. Actin filaments interact with myosin motin motor protein to form contractile actomyosin bundles. In stress fibers, non-muscle myosin 2 is present. So you can appreciate the myosin 2 as red color structures and the double helical actin filaments in orange color. The non-muscle myosin 2 cross-links two different actin filaments in an anti-parallel fashion. Myosin contains head, neck and tail domains. The ATP hydrolysis in head domain causes a power stroke that contracts the myosin head bound actin filaments. This myosin is regulated by phosphorylation via MLCK which is myosin light chain kinase and ROC which is Rho associated protein kinase and dephosphorylation is effected via MLCP which is myosin light chain phosphatase. These proteins MLCK, MLCP and ROC are in turn regulated by small GTPases and other calcium dependent proteins such as caldesmone and calmodulin. Different types of actin polarity in stress fibers would inhibit different mechanical properties and enhance the repertoire of biological functions for a cell. You can see in this picture there are three models of stress fiber structure and contractility. The first one is the sarcomeric. The second one is the uniform and the third one is the graded model of stress fiber structure and contractility. Let us discuss these models in detail. The first sarcomeric stress fibers. Actin filaments, you can see that there are actin filaments with alternating polarity with interdigitating bands of non-muscle myosin 2 held together by the green colored alpha actinin. On contraction, the myosin slides between the filaments, pulling them towards each other and closing the gap. You can appreciate here that the yellow lines with individual monomers of G actin form the F actin. The green colored protein is the alpha actinin and the red color bars are the myosin 2. Coming to the uniform model of stress fiber structure. Uniform polarity of actin filaments, myosin will not be able to cause contraction. Myosin can move along the filaments towards the plus or barbed end. However, if this myosin was attached to cargo or transport towards focal contact can take place. The third type of model is the graded model. So when a type of stress fibers known as ventral stress fibers show graded polarity. They are formed by two fibers of uniform polarity joining at their negative ends. As actin filaments become interleaved, it gives rise to mixed polarity of the bundle in the central region and such contraction would require displacement of alpha actinin. Stress fibers arise from focal contacts at the cell periphery and elongate up 
through the cell to join stress fibers at the cell surface. You can appreciate the orange dots here in the lower part of this picture. At the base of this cell, these orange dots, they are the focal points of contact which attach to the stress fibers and rise towards the cell surface from the base of the cell. These focal contacts are known as focal adhesions. Let us discuss more about these important structures known as focal adhesions. Now what are these focal adhesions? Focal adhesions are dynamic, integrin rich structures at the base of the cell. They transmit tension which is internally generated by the cell's cytoskeletal network to the extracellular matrix and vice versa. During cell migration, focal adhesions act as anchor points that suppress cell membrane contraction and promote protrusion at the leading or the front edge. In non-motile cells, they maintain the cell morphology by providing stability. There are different types of stress fibers. On the basis of their subcellular localization and association with focal adhesions, mammalian cells contain three classes of stress fibers. The ventral stress fibers, the dorsal stress fibers and the transverse arcs. The ventral stress fibers that lie along the base of the cell are attached to focal adhesions at both ends. The dorsal stress fibers are attached to focal adhesions only on one end. This focal adhesion tethers them to the base of the cell with the other end terminating in loose matrix of actin filaments on the dorsal surface of the cell. The transverse arcs on the other hand are curved actomyosin bundles formed beneath the, beneath the dorsal surface of the migrating cells. They are not attached to focal adhesions on any end. In this image, you can appreciate the different types of stress fibers. This is an osteosarcoma cell stained for F-actin and displaying the three categories of stress fibers. You can see the dorsal stress fibers marked in red, the ventral stress fibers marked in green and the transverse arcs marked in yellow. In this image, you can see the different subtypes of stress fibers along with the assembly. You can see that the ventral stress fibers which are marked in green lie along the base attached to the focal adhesions. These ventral stress fibers are attached to focal adhesions on both the ends. The dorsal stress fibers which are marked in red attach to the focal adhesion only at one end and the transverse arcs which are marked in yellow are curved actomyosin bundles and are not attached to focal adhesions on any of the ends. The to visualize focal adhesion, a focal adhesion marker, vinculin, has been used. In this slide, we can visualize clearly the structural differences between the three types of stress fibers. Now, stress fibers are complex and lengthy structures. Their assembly provokes interesting questions. Is the periodic alteration of actin myosin unit achieved by joining preformed sections like a bridge? Or is stress fiber assembly like knitting a scarf with correct components added as the structure lengthens? The answer is probably both. In this image, you can see A, which is a schematic diagram of a single stress fiber running between two focal adhesions. The focal adhesions are marked in yellow and the stress fiber is marked in red. The panel B shows a simplified model of stress fiber substructure organization. You can see the actin in red, the myosin 2 in between the actin filaments in green color and the alpha actinin cross-linking the actin filaments in blue color. 
the actin filaments have bidirectional sarcomeric pattern in the middle of the stress fiber. But it has been seen that uniform polarity is present at or near the focal adhesions. Pointed ends depicts orientation of the single monomeric actin monomers which are marked in red. Also you can appreciate in panel C which is a microscopic picture of the stress fibers. The stress fibers are seen as cylindrical structures. They are typically a few tens of microns long and the cross-sectional area of less than 0.5 microns. So which gives them a rod-like morphology when observed under microscope. The arrowheads in this picture show the multiple interconnections that are observed between adjacent stress fibers in a two-dimensional mechanical network. These interconnections are very important because they allow stress fibers to respond to external force input in a coordinated manner. You can see in panel E a proposed organization of the interface between stress fibers and focal adhesions. 2010, a model was proposed that stress actin filaments are attached to the underlying substrate through short suspension fibers. In 2016, another paper suggested that stress fiber actin filaments are attached to underlying substrate by membrane-based actin nucleators, that is ARP23 or formins. So these actin nucleators can be appreciated in light blue lines in the lower panel of the diagram marked E. And you can see that these membrane-based actin nucleators followed by integrins help to attach the cell to the extracellular matrix. You can also see a cross-sectional view of adherence junctions. These are protein complexes at cell-cell junction in epithelial and endothelial tissue. The cytoplasmic part of this junction is linked to actin cytoskeleton. Actin filaments bind to proteins such as vinculin. Vinculin further associates with E cadherin via alpha, beta and gamma catenins. In this way, adherence junction serves as a bridge connecting the actin cytoskeletal of neighboring cells through direct interaction. Let's understand the molecular signaling in stress fibers. The rho family of GTPases regulates many aspects of actin cytoskeletal dynamics and stress fiber formation. When bound to GTP, rho activates two proteins. The first one is the ROC or rho associated coiled kinase and the second one is called MDR. MDR stands for mammalian homologue of Drosophila diaphanous. MDR is a formin which nucleates and polymerizes long actin filaments whereas ROC is a kinase that phosphorylates myosin light chain phosphatase as well as non-muscle myosin 2 light chain. The phosphorylation of non-muscle myosin 2 light chain activates myosin. This leads to accumulation of activated myosin motor proteins which binds actin filaments polymerized by MDR to create stress fibers. Rho A activates ROC which also inhibits myosin phosphatase through a complex set of pathways. You can see in the picture that ROC inhibits myosin phosphatase which is a trimeric complex of M20 subunit, PPC1 delta catalytic subunit and a regulatory MBS subunit. The inhibition of myosin phosphatase activity downstream of Rho increases MLC phosphorylation and also increases the actin myosin contractility. Let us appreciate the differences between stress fiber subtypes. You can see in this picture the dorsal stress fibers marked in blue, the ventral stress fibers marked in red and the transverse arcs marked in yellow. 
The dorsal stress fibers are MDR dependent. They are also alpha actinin 1 dependent for cross linking. However, they lack myosin 2 and they are induced by RAC1. RAC1 is a rho GTPase which induces protrusions at the leading edge. Dorsal stress fibers regulate the leading edge additions. They are involved in fibrillogenesis and they promote cell migration. Let us look at the ventral stress fibers now. The ventral stress fibers are found to be myosin 2B rich. They are DAM specific. Now DAM stands for Dishelved Associated Activator of Morphogenesis 1, which is a member of formin proteins. It is rho A induced and maintains stable adhesions at the trailing edge. It is also responsible for retraction of the trailing edge and ventral stress fibers regulate the front to rear polarity axis of the cell. Coming to the transverse arcs, which are not attached to focal adhesions on any end. They are ARP23 complex dependent, MDR2 dependent and distinctly localize myosin 2A and myosin 2B. These transverse arcs mediate tension to the leading edge additions. After understanding the structure and assembly of stress fibers, let us understand their role in cellular migration. For this, we have to first understand the different modes of migration. The broad classification of cell migration modes involves either single, which is amoeboid or mesenchymal, or collective, which is group of cells, cell migration. The cells may adopt different morphology during migration. Leukocytes display amoeba-like movement and morphology. Keratocytes display a gliding motion and cells that retain cell-cell contact during motility move together. For example, epithelial monolayers during gastrulation and wound healing. These cells move together instead of a single cell moving. Also, it has been seen that the cell migration in 3D environment is little different. Little is known about the migration. However, the molecular details, migration patterns are governed by cytoskeletal organization and cell matrix interactions. Let us understand the role of stress fibers in cell migration. Actin stress fibers function in close cooperation with integrin-based adhesions, which are the focal adhesions and extracellular matrix. They regulate several cellular functions in migrating cells, including generation of contractile force, the establishment of front to back polarity axis, which helps in forming the leading edge towards stimuli, and maturation of focal adhesion, which leads to retraction of the trailing edge. They also contribute to ECM modeling, Several of these functions have to be regulated in spatial and temporal manner to achieve directional cell migration towards the stimuli. So let us study lamellipodia and phyllopodia. Lamellipodia is a thin sheet-like protrusion that is filled with branched network of actin filaments. By contrast, phyllopodia are thin finger-like projections that are filled with tight parallel bundles of filamentous F-actin. In both cases, the fast-growing barbed ends of actin filaments are orientated towards the plasma membrane. The elongation of these filaments pushes the leading edge forward and thus promotes cell migration or extension. Phyllopodia have an important role in cell migration in neurite outgrowth and wound healing. And they also serve as precursors for dendritic spines in neurons. The initiation and elongation of phyllopodia depend on the precisely regulated polymerization, convergence and cross-linking of actin filaments. Now let us discuss the steps of phyllopodium formation. Phyllopodium formation occurs in three stages initiation, protrusion with fast elongation and retraction. 
Actin filament assembly is initiated by uncapping preformed actin filaments or de novo formation, which utilizes formin proteins and ARP23 mediated actin nucleation. You can see the first panel of the diagram showing initiation where you can appreciate the actin polymerization module marked in red and formin proteins. Also, you can see the actin filaments. The force produced by actin assembly at the barbed end of actin filaments drives membrane protrusion. Numerous proteins and nucleation promoting factors promote actin assembly and enhance bundling of actin filaments by fasten. To effect retraction, the barbed end of filament is capped by capping proteins. So you can see in the retraction part of this picture where the capped proteins bind to the barbed end and retraction of the finger-like projection of phyllopodium takes place. The capping protein stops actin filament assembly and protrusion and retraction of phyllopodium occurs. A very interesting fact here is that phyllopodium can pull objects. Now objects in term of cell means food vesicles, microbes etc in case of phagocytosis. After binding to the microbe or food particle, retrograde actin movement and myosin motor activity provides the force which is needed for pulling the object microbe or food towards the cell body. Once pulling starts, initial slow movement is followed by a burst of rapid movement that decreases as the object reaches the cell body. After understanding the phyllopodia formation, let us understand the lamellipodia formation. Lamellipodia are thin sheet-like membrane protrusions found at the leading edge or the front edge of motile cells. These structures are devoid of major organelle and composed of a dense and dynamic network of actin filaments. In this picture, you can see a mouse embryonic fibroblast with labeled F-actin to visualize all the F-actin present in the cell. The cell was imaged using confocal microscope and a false color yellow was given for ease of interpretation. Now, cell motility is a cyclical process with alternating phases of protrusion and contraction. There are four steps of lamellipodia formation. Once cell is polarized, lamellipodia formation occurs as you can see the A panel. The motility is initiated by actin dependent protrusion at the leading edge. The B panel shows new adhesion formation with the substrate under the leading edge. The C panel you can see the nucleus and cell body are translocated forward by focal adhesion linked stress fibers. These stress fibers are shown in green color and the small circles in between the stress fibers are the adhesions, focal adhesions. The D panel shows retraction of stress fibers which pulls the rear of the cell forward. Adhesions at the rear of the cell disassemble and the trailing edge retracts. Let us further understand the functional significance of stress fibers. Now we know that fibroblasts in connective tissue do not contain stress fibers. However, the fibroblasts of dermal wound tissue produces stress fibers. These cells which produce stress fibers were termed as myofibroblasts or granulation tissue fibroblasts. Stress fibers of myofibroblasts orient themselves along the long axis of the wound. These myofibroblasts which are mechanically linked to the extracellular matrix through the focal adhesions by virtue of extracellular matrix remodeling contribute to the resolution of the wound site. Therefore, the contractile forces in myofibroblasts do not cause migration but generate isometric tension which reshapes or remodels the extracellular matrix. In this picture, you can appreciate the arrangement of myofibroblasts in the body of the wound. At first, it may seem to cause further gaping of this wound 
but actin stress fibers which you can see marked as red align along the long axis of the wound. The epithelial cells along the edge of the wound assemble actomyosin bundles that couple through adherence junction to form a contractile purse string structure that helps close the wound. Epithelial cells can also form specialized myoepithelial cells which form a basket-like network around the ducts of exocrine gland. Rich in stress fibers, the sustained static contraction of these cells squeezes the duct to expel milk from mammary glands. Myoepithelial cells are also present in lacrimal, sweat and salivary glands and serve the similar purpose. The myoepithelial cells, which are marked in blue, cover the external face of the mammary ducts and contract in response to oxytocin to aid the expulsion of milk. Let's give another example of endothelial cells that line the blood vessels, especially aorta. These cells experience mechanical stress in the form of hydrostatic pressure and cyclic stretch which stimulates actin stress fiber formation. Stress fiber contractility keeps endothelial cells in blood vessels flat under flow and helps the vessel wall to resist and reduce fluid shear damage. You can appreciate in this picture the last panel which shows pericytes in blue, which cover endothelial cells in mature capillaries. These cells provide sustained contraction to maintain tone and passage of blood. All these are examples of contractile non-muscle cells affected by stress fiber assembly and contractility. Let us now summarize whatever we have learnt in this module. Stress fibers are actomyosin bundles that affect contractility in non-muscle cells. Although the stress fibers resemble myofibrils, they do not contract uniformly along their length and rarely exhibit uniform actin polarity. A specialized isoform of non-muscle myosin, which is myosin 2, is present in stress fibers. It appears to play a central role in its biophysical and mechanical properties, including directional migration, adhesion formation, and sustained contraction. There are three kinds of stress fibers observed in mammalian cells. Ventral stress fibers, which are attached to focal adhesions on each end. The dorsal stress fibers, which are attached to focal adhesions only on one end and the transverse arcs, which are bundles of actin without any focal adhesion attachment. The rho A signaling pathways is mainly involved in formation and regulation of stress fibers. Cell motility, which is a cyclical process of cell protrusion and contraction, is regulated by actin fibrils by their assembly as well as disassembly. Stress fibers can directly communicate with the cell extracellular matrix interface through focal adhesions and act as mechanosensors by sensing and adapting to extracellular tension. Many physiological processes like wound healing, secretions from exocrine glands and migration of immune cells to the site of injury are possible because of stress fiber assembly, dynamics and signal transduction. I hope this module has helped you to understand the role and importance of stress fibers in cell motility. I wish you all the best for future learning. Thank you.